Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Airline Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. This is the Mastiff Build Part 3 <laughs> B, where we're going to pick up where I left off in the last video and carry on with the build. I recorded too damn much, so if you're wondering why this is a little bit disjointed, you'll want to go and watch Part 3A of this video in the same playlist. So, uh, let's carry on with the build. I think we're going into a speedy up bit now. Okay, coming along nicely. We just need to configure these torpedoes. All on one unit. We need to add a local weapon controller. That's important. Uh, I think I'll just have a a local one uh, so that it can. It has a its own its very own dedicated AI. So we need to take symmetry off, and we'll get a local weapon controller put down here quickly. And we need to put a fail safe on here. Not too worried about symmetry in this case, because it's just a local weapon controller. There's not going to be much here. I do not want an enemy simulator. That's only for fun things. Uh, AI card slot, left, right. I connect. No, it can't. I need a front back one. Stick one here. Hmm. What do I even need here? Do I... Do I need anything for these? Oh, I do. I want a target prioritization for these. Uh, otherwise, it'll end up shooting at stuff that it can't shoot at. No, wait, you can do that with the local weapon controller. Okay, so we'll change this up a little bit. Let's go this way. I don't need any cards for this. We'll just use one dedicated AI and a feel safe. Don't need a uh, wireless. And we want to set maximum altitude to ooh, five or so. And that'll prevent it from shooting at anything that we don't want it to shoot at. Maximum speed. No, that's fine. We don't need to worry about target prioritization, I don't think. We might, but it's easy to add if we do want to add it. So, uh, for now, let's just configure these torpedoes quickly. Uh, what do we want to do? A couple of fins. Uh, three fins. We've got loads of room on these, and I'm going to just make these super duper imp torpedoes. We're going to use sonars too, just to get, pa get by the fact that... Um, Flares are douchebags, and uh, there isn't really any way to deal with sonar. Um, what do we want? It should be pretty fast, so I shouldn't need a... We only need one fuel tank. Oh, please say we only need one fuel tank. We're going to have to test them, I think. Ooh, one can't last that long, can it? Ah, I don't make torpedoes that often, so let's just see what happens. Uh, torpedo sonar, and I want all of these. Every last one of them. For shits and giggles. To be EMPs. And I have ejectors on these. Oh, I want a one turn. That's what I want. So we're going to have to deal without, without one of those EMPs. We can live without it. Sign to all. And because it's all one missile controller, they're all set. Lovely. It does look a bit weird putting the uh, <laughs> stacking propellers and putting the fins at the back, but you know. Yeah, it works. Uh, the reason you put the fins at the back for anyone that's interested is fins have the highest drag coefficient. The highest base drag is 0.05, uh, except for like the heads and stuff like that, but you have to put them at the head. But for fins, you can actually put them right at the back, so they, they generate a lot less drag. And 0.04 as opposed to 0.05, it's still quite high, but if you put it right, you know, further up above the props, it would be higher. So, you know. It's just a very, very minor efficiency that you can get a little teensy, teensy, weensy bit more speed out of your missiles. Uh, ooh, lots of stuff happening there. Let's drop this thing back in the water and get her saved quickly. Uh, what's next on the list? I want to add more flares. Flares would be lovely. Um, and move these ones. Um, I'm going to do that quickly. Off no, actually, I'm not. I'm going to talk you through this one, because this is actually a handy little flare system. These are so, so simple to make, and I'm sure I have shown them off before, but um, 
Let's just do it quickly on camera so that you know what to do. Uh, I can actually get away with doing this now. So this is your local, or your missile controller. And you want to attach your um, thingy bob. It's a launch pad there. And we want to have, um, just, you know, uh, you know about the R to grab stuff, right? If you hover over stuff, you'll see that it changes all the time. It's uh, because if you press R on something, it'll copy the thing that you're moused over. Very, very useful for building quickly. I use it extensively. Uh, so we will set these guys up with simple sticky flares. That's it. Nothing else. And we want this one, this one to sticky flares. Ooh. And I need an ejector. And I think I can pop this on the back. Do not want these guys in here anymore. Uh, that can stay there for now. Uh, so that is our basic sticky flare. That's all you need to make. And what I want to do with this one is I have to get onto the missile controller. Just so that these vary a little bit, I want to stick a firing delay of uh, one second on these, I think. I think it's one second. Just to uh, vary them a little bit. If I remember right, the reload speed for one missile lag is two seconds. So if you have a one second delay, it'll shoot one second later. Now, something else I always do with these is the ejection angle. And uh, I'm going to set this one on the right to a 45 degree to the right, and this one on the left to a 45 degree to the left. Just so that it spits them out a little bit different. And how you set up your ACB, I don't really have to move this guy. I'm going to have to set the effect range a little higher though. Um, the effect range is really important here, because otherwise it'll try and trigger every weapon on your ship, just based on this configuration. The way I set my flares up, I have activate if enemy range less than input. So if an enemy is less than 2000 meters, which is about the maximum missile engagement range, short of absurdly long range cruise missiles, we want to set the weapon systems and fire the weapon systems. And this means we don't need missile warners or anything like that. This will just constantly spit out flares every couple of seconds. I, I know it's not the most efficient way to do it, but it, it helps, you know, it, it works. And uh, it's very, very simple to set up. Okay, so the last segment got cut a little bit short because I ran out of hard drive space. But all I was going to say was I'm going to uh, carry on and uh, do a couple of bits off camera. This is the next sticky flare launcher that I've made. It is a non-ejector. There's no ejectors on it, but this is a powered one. And this is the one I was talking about. I've got a variable thruster set to 100 thrust, which is really, really low. I think I could probably drop that more, but I'm going to test it first. Uh, the ramp time is set to zero. Uh, warhead arming delay doesn't really matter. Uh, that's how quickly it'll start to stick to your ship. So you don't want that set too low, otherwise it'll just launch and stick straight away. Uh, so this thing, whenever you fire, and it's set the same as the other one, it should just shoot straight upwards and go very slowly, straight all the way up to the sky. And that should detract anything or any uh, missiles that are uh, coming towards us that are using a one turn. Uh, this thing as well, this was an interesting one that Nicholas Glendening uh, suggested for me was for these guys, set the arming delay pretty high. So that basically means that the uh, the one turn is doing nearly all of the work. So if you set this to like five seconds, it takes five seconds for these missiles to start using their IR targeting, but the one turns still work. So in those first five seconds, the local weapon controller is going to be pointing it exactly where it is supposed to go for that time. So then it has five seconds of flight time and then it will pick up its target using IR. Now this can cause problems in some cases, but because these are big slow missiles, this should be okay. Um, this is the, the new setup. They're just a little bit more armored and I've got half as many missiles. They're a little bit longer. I don't think I actually showed off the missile. Uh, I've got five M warheads. They're basically the same other than that and I've got them set a little bit faster. Um, faster missiles actually turn better, believe it or not. You would think it would be the other way around, but uh, faster ones actually do turn better. So, what is next on the agenda? We're actually pretty much done for this episode, I think. Uh, all I really want to do from now to get it ready for the campaign is add a couple more shields, and we need to find somewhere to put resources, and I'm thinking it actually might be uh, safe in here, believe it or not. Uh, what's this? What's this is uh... a... You're not that explodey. That's the AP cannon. So I could possibly, if I blocked this area off, I could maybe stick a couple of resource boxes in here somewhere. This section here is actually pretty safe, believe it or not. I mean, it gets targeted a lot because there's ammo barrels in here, but I do need to find another little home for a couple of ammo barrels. I might even put some uh, little footsies, footsies with ammo on them, just out the side here to uh, make it really annoying to shoot. And... Uh, <laughs> 
they're, they're actually uh, a very, very effective. Maybe, you know, arguably pretty cheap, but they do work very well. So it, it's it's a thought. Ah, screw it. We'll do without that bit. Um, what am I going to do now? Uh, the last thing I need to put in is resources, I think. So I'm going to do that quick off, quickly off camera, and then we'll come back for a little bit of combat testing. Uh, I don't really have uh, much room for stuff left. I actually find that we run out of uh, fuel pretty fast as well. It's never great, but uh, it, it, with all the shields on, it, it, its combat time is pretty nasty. You can see the fuel ticking down slowly there. Uh, it lasts for a good few minutes, but you know, it, it, it's not quite enough. I think we, I fear we maybe need a little bit more ammo as well, but uh, I'm going to do a couple of little bits, bits and pieces and uh, find a home for resources and then add a couple of shields. Uh, more of these just on the top. We're going to put them on the roofies. Just, uh, you can sort of roughly see the shields there where they're covering. They're all at a really wonky angle and they're all layered, so uh, they, they work really, really well. They're all strength one shields, they only cost like 140 power each, but this is just what I'm gonna go with for now and see how it works. It seems to be doing okay so far. So uh, I'm gonna go with a basically a similar setup pointing vertically and uh, see how it works out. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I still think it's far from finished, but we're making progress. It's getting close to where I want it to be and it is at least it's ready for the campaign, I think. I got the shields. You can see that crazy-ass canopy. They're all strength one shields. They only cost about 120 power each. Nice and nice and cheap. But there's that many of them that they should layer up nicely and do a pretty good job of protecting us. Uh, I think... Are you loaded? Zero shells. You're not loaded. I want the two shell four case. Yes, I want you. Uh, so... Yeah, this guy's pretty much ready to go. I need to get these uh, weapons all loaded to make sure that they're getting ammo. Uh, you're ready. You're Well, you're going to work. Are you working? Let's check your loaders. You're loaded. You're loaded. And, well, I've got control at least two at the back. And they are also loaded. Sweet. Okay. So let's find something to test against. Um, white flares, I think. And let's find something pretty godlike. It's a roughly even block count. Expert basher, no, no. Soul flare. Is it zealot? Where's the zealot? Zealots are. Oh, there's a Valkyrie. Okay, it's it, it's seven thousand blocks. What we sitting at now, actually? Nearly six, so I think that would be a vaguely fair t test. I'm going to turn off my repairs because I did get repair bots installed as well. So let's get a Valkyrie in and see what happens. Now, hopefully those crams don't hit because that would be an unfair assessment. No, they don't. Good. Um, they've been sitting there and they're fully charged. You can see that is those strength one shields are doing a pretty damn good job. Oh, what was that? What hit me? doesn't seem to have done anything but yeah okay that's gonna is they gonna hit nope 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 but he's in the water take that mr. godly design haha <laughs> okay well that wasn't much of a test he's been oh, I wonder if my flares are working right my front flare working or is there no enemy within range you are 800 meters away you should be working ah it's not loaded I do need more ammo barrels. Craigie. I need a lot more ammo barrels, actually. Good lord. Ah, the caddy on the back got blown up, I think. I did put some really strong shields on this, but it obviously wasn't enough. So, that's him out of the question, so that was easy. Um, let us reset quickly, and I'll find something else to shoot. Okay, I'm warning you now. We've got two on the go here. Prepare for lag. Uh, so I'm going to get this guy just so he has a couple of resources on him. And we're going to spawn in something pretty big. Retaliator. The 13k block battleship. Perforators I know are an absolute nightmare. I cannot beat them. Uh, Desecrator looks about right. It's a godly design. It's roughly the same. I think we're actually a little bit heavier on the blocks there. Let's get him and... 
Oh no, that's more than enough. My computer's gonna lag like hell now. Uh, let's find something small. Any other small godly designs? No, Valkyrie. Oh. Find something. Nope, oh, that was perforator. Don't want a perforator. Don't want a desecrator. Okay, we'll do with a desecrator, see what happens. Desecrators are pretty scary as well. Find the UI off. Some nice stuff. Oh, those missiles. Glorious. Du, 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 du. Are they working? No, they're going distracted by flares. Those ones are working. Here comes a crown barrage. And what a mess. <laughs> that is a nice, satisfactory big hole. So how is the damage coming along on our ships? 98%. He's on 92. We're going really well. Excellent. Those shields are doing an excellent job of holding down the fort. Or holding the fort. Holding down the fort sounds stupid. Um, oh, cram barrage. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, they all hit. Good lord. Very nice little hole there. Um, oh man. <laughs> More than very nice little hole. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's what two of these guys can do to uh, a rather scary ship. I don't think the white flares are going to be such a big issue anymore. The uh, perforator is still terrifying. Don't get me wrong. I'm still very, very much scared of that. Oh, that damage. The turret just disintegrated beautifully. Oh, that lovely imp. We have imps everywhere. Oh, I never even looked at the torpedoes. How are the torpedoes doing? Are there any torpedoes? Ow! My head. Get off! We do still have a big hole in the hull, so uh, <laughs> any flak damage might do me some considerable harm. Can't see anything. Fell out of the back. <laughs> uh, I want to see some torpedoes, please. The oh, there they go. Oh, blast! I forgot to put a ballast tank on them. That's idiotic of me. They should still get to where they're going, but can't freaking see anything. I set the AI up as well, so it's doing a sort of more reasonable broadside type thing. God, I wish this would go away so I could see into something. Oh, we took a hit there. Big hit to the front. There's the cram coming in. And... Oof! One shell missed. And another considerable hole. Yeah, so, uh... I think I'm going to wrap the episode up there, after seeing just a little bit of what this guy is capable of. Well, two of them in this case. But that's a, a very scary ship, and we're doing pretty well against it. I mean, it's it's done. 64% health left. So yeah, I'm happy with this so far. It has been a bit of a trek. I think it's up to about 15 hours put into this ship now. But uh, it looks like it's going to be actually pretty worthwhile when we get this thing into the campaign. Uh, as I said, I'm going to just bring this guy out of the campaign. Even though he's not finished, we still need to add the cram barrage to the sides, or bombard, or uh, broadside cannons. We have a little bit of room for them. Oh, my face. Uh, so, we're going to do that maybe in another build video in the next couple of days. But right now, I want to get back to shooting stuff rather than building, because this build has gone on a lot longer than I really wanted it to. So, um, yeah, so I really hope you enjoy the episode. Any likes, subs, or comments are really, really awesome. I do love hearing from you guys, and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy, and have a bloody good day.